Praise God. Praise God. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Somebody give him praise. Give him glory. He woke us up this morning. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is good. Not just today. Not just tomorrow. But every hour, every second. Come on, somebody. He keeps us. Oh, hallelujah. If it had not been for the glory of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, where would we all truly be? Come on, somebody. You need to ask yourself that. On a daily basis. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Wake up thankful. Wake up mindful. Wake up with love in your heart. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. I thank you. Good morning. This is Friday. This is the fifth day of the fast. Praise God. Praise God. I know it has not been easy. But I also know that it has been beautiful in the spirit. Meaning that you are having um, breakthroughs. God is revealing revelations. Come on somebody. God is giving you instructions. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Not to mention your body is detoxing. So when you are fasting, especially on a full liquid fast and, excuse me, even for those that have actually trans, um, you know, crossed over to maybe a danger fast, which is, which is great. Let me tell you something about fasting. God loves us all. That's the first thing you need to know. But do what is suitable for your body. Everybody have different challenges. Everybody have different bodies. Everybody have different things that are going on. So you have to go to God and ask God what is best for you. So you do what you're supposed to do. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes, you know, some people, I think um, they try to do a little too much. So do what do what you do. I've been doing this for years. So, and, and even I've had some trouble sometimes, truth be told. So it's not about who's the most holiest or who can do this or do that, do what is beneficial toward you and what works for you. I need to say that because I don't want anyone feeling guilty if, you know, you couldn't finish, meaning that, okay, I can't really continue to the full liquid fast, so I'm going to cross over to a dangy fast. As long as you're fasting, as long as you're praying, as a matter of fact, let me ask you just one question. As long as you do your best, that's all God wants you to do your best, and that's in every area of our life, by the way. Do your best. That's all God have ever asked for. Oh, he didn't say be perfect, but he said strive towards perfection. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God. God is good. Glory to his name. So let's go ahead and start praying. Hallelujah. Father God, we just pray, Father God, we just thank you this morning, God. We give you honor and we give you praise. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shalom, Father God. Oh, is there anything too hard for you? Oh, Father God, I pray for everybody that's in the sound of my voice, Father God. You know what they need. You know what they desire, Father God. I pray that in every area of their life, Father God, that they are blessed. They are highly favored. They are prosperous, not just monetary, but God in their soul, their mind, their body. Oh, Father God, I pray that you keep them all the days of their life, Father God. We rebuke every assignment right now from the enemy in the name of Jesus. Every plot, every plan. We annul it right now. We terminate it. We sever it to the root of that thing right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father God, everybody that's in the sound of my voice, strengthen them, Father God. Keep them, Father God. Strengthen them in their mind, their body, their soul, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I have to say this because God told me something. Anybody that's on here, Father God, any witch or warlock, Father God, that is listening and looking and lurking, oh, Father God, I bind them up right now in the name of Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost fetters. I'm talking about fetters of fire in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, arrest them, Father God. Arrest that spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, you rebuke them. He says the Lord rebuke you in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father God, we know that the enemy is always present, but Father God, we know that you rule and Hallelujah to his name. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood. There it goes. The blood of Jesus is still powerful. The blood comes against you, Satan. I say the blood comes against you, Satan. I say the blood of Jesus comes against you, Satan. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth name, we pray this prayer. This prayer will not be hindered, stopped, or blocked. We will accomplish what it was sent out to do. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, let us all say in agreement and on one accord, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. If you see my title the battle oh come on somebody oh hallelujah i'm on one early this morning because one thing that god was telling me this is a battle 
And this is going to be a battle to the day you die. It's a battle for your mind. It's a battle for your soul. It's a battle for your body. Oh, come on, somebody. We just talked about body snatchers the first day or the second day of the fast. We talked about how demons try to possess your body. This is an ongoing battle. And the battle, honestly, is in your mind. Oh, come on, somebody. That's why the Bible says renew your mind. That's why God says renew your mind daily. Hallelujah. Meditate on this word daily. Come on, somebody. And people don't do that. But you, you, you'll, you'll clock into that job. You'll give your all to that job. You'll give your all to that husband. You give your all to that wife. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm just telling you how T.I. is. Come on, somebody. You know it's the truth. But you have to do like Mac, Matthew 6, 33 says. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. We, we were not right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So it has to be through his righteousness. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Let's go into this Bible study. So the first scripture I want to come with you today, this morning, is Proverbs twenty four sixteen, And it says, For a just man falleth seven times and rise it up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The, the title of this sermon and... and Doing this fast, this is what I do. I, I, I listen for instructions from God. God, what do you want me to tell your people? You see, and that's what we should do on a daily basis. Now, remember, this is a study, so I'm going to be teaching. I ain't going to be preaching all the time, all right? I know y'all like when I preach because I'm very emotional. I'm very dramatized and not because, and this is why. When you have a fire in you, you can't help but be drama. I mean emotional and, and passionate. That's the word that it really is. I'm passionate about Christ because he's a passionate person about us. He loves us. He loves you. And you got to understand that and know that. But there's a problem in the body of Christ. We don't understand the battle. The battle for our mind, our battle, for the battle for our soul and our body is real. And, and the question is, who possesses it? Does God really have your attention? Don't lie now. Come on, somebody. As a matter of fact, if you're going to lie, you're lying to yourself. And you're the only one, trust me, because everybody else already know. Because you see, when you have a spiritual discernment and wisdom over your life, you can pick somebody up just like that. Because remember, your spirit is more induced in your flesh. You are more of a spirit being. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And what's happening is people are not doing what they used to do. You know, we used to, think about it, I'm about to go here. For the ones that still are in church and goes to church, you don't see but maybe 20, 30 people at a Bible study, right? But you'll see people on Sunday morning, Wednesday, Saturday, whatever church, oh yeah, because the pastor there, right? But what is more important, being just in church one day or being in Bible study? Understanding this battle because guess what? It is for your soul. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. The enemy wants your soul. And, and, and the question is, who does it really belong to? And, and how you know is how you operate. How do you operate? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. How do you truly operate? Now, now hold on, don't fool me. Because in front of people, you know, everybody's like, hallelujah, glory be to God. Oh, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. I mean, we got them cliches down pat. But the question I want to ask you this morning, and this is just for you, this is not for the whole world. When no one's looking, who are you? Come on, somebody, because God is always watching. But, but no, come and say that again. When no one is looking, who are you? What, what, what do you really do? What do you really meditate on? What do you really look at? What do you really read? What do you really think? What do you really say? Because we got people, oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah, the chameleon all day long. I'm talking about in front of people, they're so nice and sweet. Oh, she's so sweet. Oh, he's so sweet. And then behind closed doors, cussing their wife out, their daughter out, their sister out, their brother out. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Don't play with me this morning. That double-minded stuff, that double-standard stuff, that perpetrating stuff. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And all God wants is you to get it right. Come on, all of us to get it right. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me go. To another scripture right here. He says, Jeremiah 314, turn, O backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. What God is pretty much saying is that even though you fall, get back up. There are going to be times that you will fall. I promise you, you will fall. I don't care how strong you are in the Lord. We all fall. We all fall short of the glory of God. And people don't want to hear that. 
Because we will tell everybody else what they're doing, but you can't look at the man or the woman in the mirror. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. The Bible says to actually, you know, you, you, you got to dissect yourself. You got to inspect yourself. You got to examine yourself. And, and you got to ask God, God, help me. God, keep me. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me go to the points that God was actually saying. Praise God, praise God. God says the Bible is full of problems and answers. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. That Bible is an instruction guide. You know, like a manual they give you when you buy a car. It's a, this is how it works. This is what works. This is what don't work. This is what you need in order to actually make it work. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So why would you not pick up that Bible every day? Because guess what? There are so many things up in that Bible, the secret of the kingdom, the secret of the scripture. So you can read one scripture and get five different meanings. Oh, come on, somebody. And then if you really have an anointing on your life, and I'm talking about when God really shows you the secret of the kingdom, I mean that it's the dark sayings. It's like you'll read that one scripture, you'll get one revelation. And then you read it again, you'll get another revelation. You'll be like, wait a minute. I'm talking about it will transform right in, before your eyes. So if it transformed right before your eyes, don't you know it will transform you? That's why God says study and renew, renew your mind. Study to show yourself approved. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. The body of Christ, the only reason that we're weak in this hour, and remember, I say we because I want y'all to get an understanding of how our God looks at us. God doesn't just look at us as, okay, this is servant Deanna. This is servant Titus on here. This is servant Monique on here. This is Jova Chanel, servant Chanel. No, God looks at that's the children of Israel and I'm gonna tell you what's happening to us the world has came into the church and the world has said this is what's important um how much money you have where you stay <laughs> who you hang with the clicks oh come on somebody hallelujah uh, um this what, what, what school your children go to what car you drive y'all don't understand what I'm saying so so the all these standards that God never set come on somebody hallelujah now hold on I'm not saying that God doesn't want you to have things in life. He don't want the things to have you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He wants you to keep your heart pure. And we're going to talk about a lot today. We're going to talk about a lot. So hold on. Also, the enemy is after your confidence. Because after you fall, after you sin or something, don't you start feeling guilty? You feel like, well, God don't love me. Or people know. Everybody don't know your business. But it is written all over your face. Come on, somebody. Y'all remember that song? It's written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. Spirits is real. And, and to be honest with you, when you have a spiritual sight, I see spirits on people. And it, that isn't to judge or bash. But I could never understand something. And throughout the studies, I actually become transparent because you need to see that. You remember I told you, when I, I've been in ministry 23 years. The first 10 years I played. I played straight, could not, did what well, some of y'all doing, still doing, y'all know what I'm saying. And I could never understand how the mothers of the church, there were some real mothers back then. We're not talking about the mothers that want to show their breasts and drop it hot these days or, or, or look like, or, or comp having competition with the young girls. We're not talking about those mothers right now. Because there's some different kind of mothers right now in the church. Hello? I could never understood how they knew my business. I, 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 Cause you know you how you think you slick. You go to the next town, or or you do your stuff at three or four o'clock in the morning when everybody so say sleeping. But but you know the freaks do come out nine in the morning. Come on, somebody, how do you or don't play with me? And I walk in church like I ain't did nothing. You know you 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 all fresh and you looking good and you know. And I'm not kidding. They would look at me, I, I, and I guess they knew because they knew who I was destined to be. They'd be like, mm-hmm. You know how they used to do, mm-hmm. And I get so mad. I'm like, why are these old, why, 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 I ain't gonna lie, why are these old ladies messing with me? I wish they'd leave me alone. Never understood. They were trying to tell me, you're not fooling anyone but yourself. Come on, somebody. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me this morning. They were trying to tell me. They weren't trying to hurt me. And, and that's what the church, that's why the church can't take correction right now and rebuke. Because now you think somebody's trying to hurt you. But as long as I've been living, the people that truly love you, they tell you the truth. Even Jesus, he says, because I don't really call you servants, I call you friends, I tell you the truth. People don't like truth anymore because it hurts, huh? Oh, yes, a real friend, a real person that loves you. Or even someone that teaches and preaches like I do. We are mandated to tell you the truth. But hold on. That doesn't negate the fact that we have to walk in it too. Because I told y'all something. And I was very serious by the way. 
this is the season of exposure. I know y'all saw um, on Facebook the mega pastor in California. That's just the beginning. Do you not remember when I told y'all I think the second or third day of the fast? Do y'all think I'll be playing? And all you got to do, let me tell you something, is just wait for it. When God gives a word, just wait for it. And that's not to glorify such things because, no, when one hurt, everybody hurt, believe it or not, because it's a hit to the kingdom. Because there are two kingdoms. I don't care. I know y'all think we just living in this big old world and everybody just going to work and having fun and making money and all this other stuff, right? No, we're living in two kingdoms. And the question is, which one do you really operate in? Because some of you are on the fence. One day you're operating with God, the next day you're hanging with the devil. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible says that I will spew you out of my mouth because I'd rather you hot or cold, but you you trying to be lukewarm. He said, I, 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 can, you, can you make up your mind? You want to serve me or not? Come on, somebody. He said, choose this day who you're going to serve and quit playing with me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because a lot of you love to play with God. That's how I know you don't really know God. Because when you truly know God, have you really read that Bible? You mean to tell me he really used Moses? He, re he really split the Red Sea? Oh, y'all ain't ready for me? God is a God of power, love, and wrath. Hallelujah. Getting back to the subject, it's called the battle. And the battle is in your mind. And if you don't renew your mind, if you don't get in that Bible, if you don't pray, if you don't fast, I can guarantee you, you're going to fall. And, and, and hold on, even after you do all that, you might still fall. So that's how, that's how real it is, spiritual warfare. And, and I'm going to tell you something. You will always, when you are seriously anointed, I promise you got demons assigned to you. You got witches and warlocks that are their sin. To trip you up. And, and hold on. I'm going here. Sexually. Emotionally. Financially. On your job. and your household. and your marriage. If they can't get you. They'll try to get to your kids. And you wonder why. And I'm going to pull this out again. This, this is in my Bible. But I'm pulling it out again. I don't know why. I got to pull it out again. Because some of you didn't see it. I have a list. That God has made me put names on. And, and and Facebook family, you're on there too. You probably can't see it. And I know my page a little torn because I've been having, I put oil on my hand and I pray. And my name is on here too. I pray for name. I pray. And excuse me, every city that I'm in, every city that God has brought me in, like right now I'm in Augusta, but right now I'm in Atlanta. I always put the city, Orlando, Atlanta, and this is what I put. I don't know why I got to say this, but I have to say it. I put the city of, of Atlanta, the leaders of Atlanta, the police of Atlanta, the neighborhoods of Atlanta, um, the judges, um, the district system. I mean, you have to name it all. We got to get back to praying the right way. Jesus was specific when he prayed. Oh, come on, somebody. That's why some of the things are not working in the church today. We're praying these elaborate prayers. You have to be specific of what you want, how you want it, and what you won't stop. Because remember, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love should eat the fruit thereof. That means that I got to pray. You got to pray over your city. You got to pray over your state. You got to pray over your town. You got to pray over your house. Oh, hallelujah. You got to lay hands. And hold on, I got to say this. Some of you, I don't like to say the word, so I'll spell it. I'm sorry. I just don't speak that word. B-R-O-K-E. Lay hands on your money. Some of you got stuff going on in your body. Lay hands on your body. Yesterday, when I got a little woozy, I, oh, trust me. I put my arm on. I laid hands on thyself. Y'all ready for me? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Lay hands on everything that tries to, to overtake you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Pray over everything that tries to overtake you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got to pray. Pray. I keep, I keep hearing it, and I'm going to be saying it to the end of this fast, and, and probably forevermore. I keep hearing it. God says, it's not about bigger cars. It's not about bigger houses. It's not about bigger names. Oh, I say that. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Everybody's trying to be famous. What does it, it does it matter if you're famous and you have no power? Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. And, and, and hold on. I'm not talking about because y'all love to say this. Oh, they could rally them in. Oh, honey, you could have a church full, but if you are powerless. Then all you got is a bunch of spirits running around, y'all preaching and teaching, laying with each other, playing with each other, playing demons. Oh, come on, somebody. It's a whole playground. Yeah, I see it.
Yeah, I see it. God says, guard your mind. Guard your thoughts. He says, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He said, the whole matter of life and death is a battle for your soul. And he told me to ask you, who will win your soul at the end of this battle? Hello. Who will win your soul at the end of this battle? Now, I want to talk about something that's very, very, is deep. After you fall, let me tell you what happens. There's a guilt. Everything's a spirit. I need you to know. And, and remember, one spirit do not just work alone. It's always like a lot of spirits. Like jealousy is attached to greed, pride, anger. You understand what I'm saying? So when you fall or you commit sin, let me tell you what happens. The guilty spirit, it brings a torment spirit. So I want to read some things to you this morning. All right? And that's why a lot of people... They get depressed, oppressed, suppressed. So all this ties into the to the Bible study. Don't you understand? Once you sin, just give it back to God and say, God, you know, I repent. But now hold on. That means stop doing it. You can't just keep doing it. And and, and some of you love to play with the grace of God. Well, you, I I I, I fell this week. Then you fall next week. Then you fall the next week after that. Not now you playing. You playing. I understand being weak. To a something or someone, but that is when you ask God, God, I need you, or you stop answering that phone call. Especially if you have, if you fornicate, y'all don't hear, but I'm saying, you have to make a sound choice to stop sinning. Come on, somebody, hallelujah! And you have to be real with yourself. You can't, you can't be no baby. Dude, quit playing the baby game. You know, I, I, I'm just so okay. Well, then you're gonna get what you get. Point, point blank in the story. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So these spirits are supernatural. So they know. You see, the, let me tell you something, the whole matter. The devil has been watching you your whole life. He knows what you like. Mm. He knows how you like it. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to get you. So he dangled that carrot. Now the question is, now you may fall that first time, let's be honest. But are you going to keep falling? That's the question. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So let me read you something here. There was this story about this young lady, and her mother was a psychic, okay? So she started actually um, dipping and dabbing in it. And here's what happened. Spirits begin. Now, and I'm trying to go slow with this because a lot of people don't understand this. It's called mind-binding demons. What they do is they actually stick their hand in your brain, and they do like this. That's what calls, so say, mental illness and all these other things. Because right now, they're trying to torment you. It's called tormenting spirits. And that com that only comes in when you're feeling sad, depressed, oppressed. And But it comes in through sin. Do you understand why God says the wages of sin is death? Because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to kill you. They're not trying to play with you. They're not trying to have a good time with you. They're trying to enter in. Uh-oh, got it. Did you ever understand sin Take away the S is in. Mm. I'm going to say it again. Sin. Take away the S is in. Spirits entering in. Just like, oh, I'm, I'm going here. I, I got to teach this to when God wants me to. You ever, and I said this before, you ever understood what entertainment means? Something is entering in through your eye gates, your ear gates, your mouth gate. It's entering in. Tain, containment. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Y'all don't understand why they call it entertainment, huh? Because though that spirit is trying to get in you by any means necessary, through food sometimes, through sex, through phone calls. That's why, you know, like, I, I'm very serious. I'm very, very um, sensitive to the spirit. So if, I've, if I'm talking to somebody and I feel a spirit, I'll take the phone from off my ear and put it on speaker. Because, no, I don't want that spirit trying to enter in. Let me tell you something. And, and churches are not teaching this because they pretty much can't. They got to stay on the prosperity and everybody going to be blessed and, and turn around. And, and they'll, they'll talk about Joseph. They'll talk about David. They'll talk about Saul. But they won't talk about spiritual warfare. They won't talk about the battle for your soul. They won't talk about how do you win this battle. The enemy hates fasting because he knows it brings your flesh under subjection. So that's one of the keys. If you make fasting a lifestyle, and, and I'm going to be honest with you because I have to, because you need to know this because so many leaders and people act like they all got it together. 
I used to fast all the time when I was in California. When I left California, I stayed there for 15 years. When I left California, it became hard. I went back to Louisiana. Y'all already know everybody like to eat. And just some of the people I was around, oh, God, that's good. It does matter about your environment and your atmosphere. They weren't, they weren't fasting. So when I started this fast again, and I'm going to be transparent on purpose, God said, Deanna used to fast every week. He said, I need you to go back to that. So yesterday when, he was, when we were conversing and talking, I said, God, I repent. He said, Deanna, the anointing on your life requires it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's why some of you are weak in spirit. And so I repented. I said, God, I repent. He said, I know it get hard. I know you get tired. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. Somebody pulling on me. And you're starting to cry now. I could feel it. Have you ever got tired of serving God? Don't play with me. This is only for the real people. I ain't got time for you jokers. It's for the real people. God, I love you. But man, it's hard. It get hard sometimes, God. Because we're not following instructions. And that's why I repent. I say, God, I repent. I start following instructions. I know what I got to do to stay strong. I know I got to stay in my word. I can't do like everybody else. I can't play like everybody else. I can't play like everybody else. I got to do this thing right. And just how he has given me the instructions. Because the instructions follows your mandate. Your mandate follows your calling. Your calling is deliverance and healing for everybody else. So you got to do this thing because it ain't about you. That's the first thing. Second thing. Got to get in that word. And the enemy will try to keep you from that word. He'll have somebody call you, child. I don't gossip on the phone. I ain't got time for that. I might talk to you, but I'm not. No, I ain't getting caught up in that one. Secondly, a job. Well, we need you to work. Well, I need that money. I need to pay my bills. The enemy will attack your finances on purpose so you can go get two, three jobs. I, I, I'm sorry. I got to say these things on here because God is leading me. I've never believed that God have called you to do two or three jobs. God is not going to tell you to wear your body out when that is the most precious asset that you have. Come on, somebody. Because guess what? God needs you in the earth to move. We just talked about that on Monday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He needs you. And I thought about that one too. I had to repent about that one. He said, Dan, I, I done told you. You have to lose the weight. Oh, I'm being real transparent because I got to. I ain't got time. Look, look, I might be preaching to myself this morning. Hallelujah. He said, you go up and down like a yo-yo. I said, God, you're right. I repent on that too. He said, you have to be consistent. I'm trying to take you somewhere. But I cannot take you that place if you're not consistent. Because hold on, and I'm not just talking to myself now, hallelujah, I'm talking to some of you. Consistent in everything that you do, everything you say, everywhere you go. You can't be, a, 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 you can't be safe in front of people and behind people. You're smoking, you're choking, oh y'all know what I'm saying. Ooh, did I say that? I sure did. Doing all kinds of things. Tainting your body, l letting the demons enter in. Come on somebody, Hallelujah. So it's about good choices, God says. So, so the first one is fasting. Second one, being consistent. Stay in your word. Get in your word. And I ain't got no problem with the word. And I got that down pat. Hallelujah. Hanging associations. That's the fourth one, God says. Watch who you labor with. Because everybody's not your friend, Judas. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Some people are sent to throw you off. Some people are sent to knock you down. Some people are sent, hallelujah. Just like, excuse me, just like God sends people, the enemy sends people. You know, they got a cartoon. I hate this cartoon. Um, I forgot the name of it. But it's a cartoon that actually is still, it's still um, it, it's, it shows that the devil is somewhere in a dark place. And what he's doing is he sent out assignments and I was like oh my god I said they showing it to these kids and they were throwing up the devil signs and everything else well just like that that's just what he's doing to us he's looking he said oh oh she mad send that anger spirit send that mad spirit send that rage spirit that's how people kill people anger is attached to the rage spirit I saw it when I it's very rage it's a red demon that's how people kill people so do you understand that's why you got to take them deep breaths and come on somebody, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on somebody. All right, so associations. You got to watch 
who you hanging around. I don't care what you say. Mom used to always say, you lay down with a dog, you're going to get fleas. Straight up. That's not to say everybody's bad. That's not to say bash people, throw them away, act ugly, talk, talk about them. We ain't got to do all that. Just cut it. Come on, somebody. Just cut it. Because guess what? God needs you. Your destiny is more important than who you hang with. Everybody don't love you anyway. Because truth be told, the more you get anointed, the more that God uses you, you're going to have to separate yourself anyway. You might have two or three. And then you got to stay testing them. Mm, I'm about to say something. Let me tell you something. One thing I've, I have a pet peeve about is people trying to play with my intelligence. And you, I'm going to tell you why. Not that I'm all that. But because I have the spirit of God inside me, don't you know if I miss it, God will wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and tell me about you? Mm, you didn't hear what I just said. And some of you will, will say, no, God, that's not true. And then when it happens, you're crying, and then you blame God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I'm talking about the battle this morning. There's a serious battle. And sometimes the battle is you. Sometimes you're your worst enemy because you won't listen to God or anyone else. Hallelujah. Because you won't. What you want, what you want. And that same thing will take you under God says. Hallelujah. And I passed that test a long time ago. Because let's be honest. God says it's not, it's not good for man to be alone. But, but hold on. You got to wait on him. You can't just do what you want to do. How you do what you do. And then when you get what you get, you get mad. You have to learn to wait on God, people. And I know God's timing can be like... Hello, <laughs> are you coming? Are you there? Are you here? Do you hear me? That's your test. God have tested everybody in that Bible. Do you not think that you are next? We are next. You're always going to be testing because each level a different devil. God has to make sure that you can stand. Why do you think so many people are falling? They were never processed. And so that they were never processed. The, de the enemy knows that. Then we say, they got a weakness here. And let me tell you what he does. He lays dormant. Oh, I'm about to I'm about to get oh, this is getting good. Let me tell you what he does. Have you ever not sinned for let like, let's say like a year or two in, in a sin, maybe fornication, adultery, smoking, or whatever, drinking, and then all of a sudden, two or three years later, that thing show up again. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You have um, it's called dormant spirits. They lie dormant and they just wait. They wait for a weak moment. Or they wait for maybe a family member have died, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ. Or, or something has happened. And they just, oh, 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 they depress. Oh, oh, they anger. Oh, oh, they weak. Get them. And so he send those spirits. And then you do it. And now that state, because the Bible says, once that you have been saved and clean up your house, then he says, and if you fall again, then they send seven more wicked spirits. Than the first than the first time. Now it's harder. You understand how we get cut up? And I'm not saying this is easy because I promise you it's not. Being a Christian is one of the hardest things that you will ever have to do. But also the most rewarding things. Hallelujah to his name. Pay you better than a job, got a 401k that's out of this world. Hallelujah. Oh, and when you die, oh, you you get promoted. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. Y'all ain't ready for me. But on earth, that's the test. Can you pass the test? Can you tell your flesh no? Can you make good decisions, good choices? Can you be obedient to what the Spirit says? Hallelujah to His name. Because you got an enemy that is trying to take your spirit from you. And deceive you by any means necessary. And the same thing that he's working with is the same thing that you should be working with. So you say by any means necessary? Well, I'm going to stay with God by any means necessary. Hallelujah. Who I got to cut, cut. Who got to go, go. If I got to quit this job, I'm going to quit this job. Some of you, my God, guess what? This, was on, this phone was almost 100%. They, they say it's getting ready to shut down. They don't like this kind of talking. I already know that, so oh my gosh, so I'm going to have to stop this. I tell you, you see how that devil is? You are such a loser. <laughs> He's a loser, but anyway, I was almost finished anyway. I'm going to tell you right now, you got to stand strong with God. And remember, this battle is real. And you guys, I got to, because I I feel the spirit of God, so I, I, I got to end it because I don't want them to just end this. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, is it worth it? Always ask yourself. Every decision 
Is it worth your soul? Is it worth your spirit? Is it worth your anointing? You got to understand this. And guess what? Keep your mouth off people. Keep your mouth off people. If God didn't tell you to say it, don't say it. Because that's another thing you're going to get hit. So yeah, these, these are the rules. There's rules to this. There's levels to this. Yes, it is. And you can do it. Because God said that he loves you. He's married to the backslider. So when you fall, what we do, we stand tall and come back for more. That's what we do. How you doing? Don't you dare get suppressed, suppressed, oppressed, depressed. That's what the enemy wants. God say, forgive yourself and forgive others. That is the art of love, by the way. You have to forgive people. Yeah, we all shade it sometimes. Or oh, I say it. You, oh, you, you ain't never been shaded. Stop lying. We all been shady a little bit. Repent. Forgive yourself. Forgive that person. Because God says all of us have sinned. None is perfect. None is righteous. Hallelujah to his name. So I'm going to go ahead and end it because I don't, I, don't, I don't understand what's happening with my phone. It will go off and I feel it. So God bless you. I love you all through Christ. Remember, I'm not going to be doing it Saturday and Sunday because I got to replenish myself. Because I'm not going to lie. These full liquid fast. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But it's good. It is good that I've been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. So God bless you. Have a nice weekend. And remember, you know, do what your body says to do. You know, even if you can go to 12 o'clock. You know, or, or remember what I said, 5 a.m. to 3 p.m., just liquids and cross over to a Daniel fast. You know, we're almost there. It's just 14 days. You know what I'm saying? So God bless you. God keep you. Stay empowered. Stay on your word. Remember, you know, be humble. Um, pray, 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 pray. Pray for the people. I'm so tired of people disappearing. I don't like this. I think they, I know they're sacrificing because I keep hearing in the spirit. And some of these are hits because what they want to do, they want a new world order. They're not playing. I'm talking fast because I don't want this thing to go off. They want a new world order. They're not playing. So Christians, right now, they really need to get in position. It's too much playing the enemy is trying to taunt everybody with cars and money and titles and self and you know self pride all, all that no 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 stay focused on the mission of God God needs you in this hour that's somebody hurting that's somebody you're supposed to help that's somebody you're supposed to help deliver that's somebody that God is going to use to even bless you hallelujah because what you make happen for others God will make happen for you let me go because I, I, I don't want to get caught up and, and lose this so God bless you I love you all this is Apostle Deanna Dixon Roll out soldiers, for that is who you are. God bless. Let's get this. And yes, I will be praying for you, my love, Joanna. I pray for all you guys all the time. And, and pray for me. Wait a minute. All those that have a prayer life. Y'all know I don't play that. All right. Love you. God bless.